All right. I think uh, we have a view here from the expert panel. They firmly believe that the top team so far here at the Perfect World Masters will continue in that vein as they head into the semi-final of the bracket. It's game on as far as Team Secret and Vici Gaming are concerned, which means handing you over to our commentary team for our final series of the night. Toby Wan and Melini, it's all yours. Feeling that hype coming from the panel as well as the, might say bias. As well as the crowd. The crowd! Yes, that's right. We have ourselves a bit of a smoke gank right here. Wait for him to come in later this weekend, however. But VG Gaming, fantastic we draft, well-rounded. Merlini, you seem to be a big fan of it as well at the very end. Oh, I like the draft a lot more. Uh, for a lot of reasons. I think the Brewmaster versus the Omni Knight is something that other teams have explored in this tournament and has worked out surprisingly well. Yeah, you just cyclone him, and then what is he going to do? <laughs> if you repel yourself, he just cyclones someone else. And you can dispel the GA, which is awesome. And then they have the good lane matchups. Omni Knight might be able to win his lane, but you have the Puck versus the TA, which is definitely TA favored. And you also have all these heavy, heavy physical damage dealers versus a Tiny. Like, Tiny it has some armor with Grow, but he's still going to get destroyed. I guess at least you don't get any value from Natural Order. Negative value. Uh, There's an upside. But as you That's said, like the grow, like uh, the armor change was in grow recently, so the movement speed's gone, but you get the 5, 10, 15 armor buff up that comes with that. So maybe that does make him a little bit more sustainable. I was also interested to see how uh, Team Secret would, would do the laning phase. Jack was mentioning it. Maybe you want to get that Omni Knight up against the Brewmaster. Right now, Team Secret actually have Fada sitting up on the top lane with uh, CTY being aggressive to try and steal our bounty runes. Everyone's going to end up trading out to a 2-2 rune situation anyway. So, but this is going to make for a fun laning phase to say the least. Yaps is already starting his rotation. Puppy setting down sound. So it looks like Team Secret are going to go with standard lanes and VG are doing exactly the same thing. So nothing out of the ordinary with the very, very start. And do we actually expect a very passive style of game? Like you can look for Puppy and Yapsaw to do his rotation. Do you get the same amount out of like Lanham or is Lanham just like the same here? Trade with Puppy, do this dual lane mid that we're used to. You have to look at the core matches for that. And in the mid lane, we have Puck versus TA, which is the big, big uh, discrepancy, right? TA scales a lot better. Puck generally just, you know, he, he can get, he can snowball a lot more, whereas TA benefits way more from a passive style where you just farm up Ancients and do Roche if the other team is doing something silly. So I would say that Vici definitely have the late game. Uh, I would say Terraplane is also just like really hard to deal with in the late game, especially with their lineup that does not have significant of amounts of AOE. Tree grab does not count. <laughs> we all we want that account, Puppy. He has dropping really low here in mid. So much damage on line with a plus 54. It will be enough. I Puck actually will be able to get a revenge, but I man. did not think he was actually going to die from that hit. Uh, I was like actually it. very I was like, okay, it's going to take him like one and like a tenth more hit. It looked like he had like one 10% HP of uh, one right click, but oh. maybe he rolled a little bit high. Maybe he's got a ton of damage from creeps. He had plus 52. He literally had double damage. And now Dude, Lanham comes back into it again. Back at it. <laughs> oh, man. Toss the phone book at it. And this is... This is a hero who, like, I was wondering too, like, when he got picked up, if it will all be about, like, the offlane of VG, like, just giving that absolute power to ensure that Ace can't get himself a good start, but instead he's focusing pretty heavily on just making CTY's life very problematic, but it's, it's really not that bad, is it, though? Like, CTY is still 8 for 3 not, against it, a 10 for 1. CTY got a kill in return. It's not to make his life problematic, it's to make the TA's life easy. Because TA... TA versus Ogre is really bad. Like, you can take off all the reflection charges. Are they going to get a revenge? Gapsaw in through yep. the side, pick him up, toss him back over again. And then it's just all about a good club, and Puppy gets his revenge. So a lot of them's doing something that's, you know, generally what you do in this sort of situation. You draw the attention away from the TA, and you put a lot of focus on yourself uh, so that TA can get to level 5, level 6. Once you're level 5, level 6, you're perfectly fine. You can do Ancient super easily. You have traps to help you out, and... Elder Titan can catch up easily. He's a support. Who cares if he dies early? As long as your TA gets a relatively easy time. And the CS is actually very close in the mid lane yep. for them. CS is actually close all around. Like, there's only Puck who's just slightly ahead of everybody else. But 
It is very even. This bottom lane is really is the brawlers. ACLS tends to charge up his sleeve as well as the avalanche, so he'll return a bit more damage. Has a tree up, needs more life. There's the sick charges kicking in. Doesn't have the avalanche back again. Going into the tower. Young 11 mango, so he can clap into the trees. The damage from the tower will be quite high, but not high enough. Dude, they are just going at it. Like, they do not care about dying towers. They are. Uh, this is the Vici I like to see. Aggressive, in control. I suppose, too, when Vici Gaming look at Team Secret, top lane, bit of a pickup. Fenrir, difficult to kill. You do have two points up in Purify, so Fada's trying to cut his way through a little bit faster. Not They're not going to get it. Bane is way too tanky. Yeah. But uh, when you think about the weakness of Team Secret, every everyone knows, obviously, you're, you're missing out mid one. You've got CTY as that stand in. And you. Okay, Fada. Oh, actually, he's in trouble. Space created by Yapsaw. Has to put the sleep onto himself. Fada goes for the tree line. Still has that purification. Taking the time to salve up to. Making it sure this metamorphosis of paparazzi is as wasted as much as they can. Yapsaw has his clarity cancelled. Fade falls. He knows he's dead, but in comes Puppy. If they can get a revenge on a paparazzi, they'll make it worthwhile. But the storm from Lanham. Everyone goes to sleep for the moment as paparazzi runs down south. Trying to escape from this gank, but he's salving up into the trees. They need to cancel this. More loose to choose from. Puppy so low. Purification's on the Fada. So he can set his ground, do the damage into Paparazzi, but it doesn't work when Fenrir claims a double kill as that Bane picking up the supports of Team Secrets offlane. That was some great teamwork coming out from Vici and Paparazzi, sick Illusion Micro. There's only so many limited things that you can do as a Terrorblade early on in the game, and Illusion Micro is definitely one of the top things. That's what I like to see from the position ones. Scout out that vision, and that burned Rubik's clarity too. Like, he... You know, Yepsor has kind of been hailed as a position four, but he does demand a lot of farm. Even a lot of small things like that are going to ruin his game. Or have the potential to ruin his game, rather. Hmm. Oh, that, that last one I was getting to before two team fights happened to interrupt me. It's just the fact that VG Gaming, if they, if they push up the tempo, it breaks the weakness and the synergy of Team Secret's lineup with the stand in. Done! Maybe so. Maybe so. Weakens. CTY, I. I Puck is uh, Puck's actually one that you do need a lot of teamwork, so I can see it this game. Some of the heroes, it's like, you know, yeah. it, but, yeah, it's okay. a mid-player. Yeah, you can see Puppy's draft trying to get around that yeah. as, as often as he possibly goes. Like, what do I pick? Medusa and Razor, two heroes, very difficult to kill. Morphling, very difficult to kill heroes. I think it's less so the stand-in factor and more the chaotic factor that CTY brings, because he is a very, very difficult player to read. Movements, item builds, just... The way he plays is unlike a lot of other players, I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, Team Secret have to read him as much as they possibly can. But for now, the draft, the the, uh, the farming game, six minutes in, pretty well balanced. Only one K the difference. It's just more battles for the like, Yapsos try to steal the bounty ring. Fart is nearby, so he can help out here. Just looking for the Brain Sap. Level 2 on it. More support rotating over. Again, Lanham with the Spirit Stomp. It only catches Fata. The Spirit gives a little bit of extra vision for that, but Ori doesn't have the high movement speed as he's still short of his phase boots. So he cannot get up the hill in time. Bottom lane. Brewmaster split is going out. Ace trying to survive into the trees. Stick charges once again going to go off. The Brewmaster split. Got another six seconds left on it. Six seconds will be more than enough. Maybe it won't be. Avalanche is up. Yep, so suddenly blocking Ace, and that will allow the Rockstar to fly forward. He doesn't have another control here. Yep, so finally Puppy will hit the deck. Dude, he's balling out of control. 11. Brewmaster, I remember seeing him on the safe lane. He performed pretty well, but this is far better early game than he has had. Yeah, his CS isn't great, but he's killed the Tiny. Twice yep. without dying, and that is very, very impressive. He's almost got the same net worth as the TA. Top three net worths belong to VG Gaming at the moment. And he's also forcing the supports to move. They had a TP down to the bottom lane, and now top lane is just not particularly great for Fada. He knows that he's going to be alone for quite some time. I'm wondering if that's the reason, too, why he was just pressuring the top tower, at least put into the mind of Paparazzi that he can be aggressive, that he is a strong hero. He brought 10 tangos to lane, so I'm sure he's fine. Middle lane rotations coming in. 
There's Puppy and Lanham get to say hello to each other. Not much should come from this as they're still fighting underneath the tower. It's just the fact that CTY is just so low on life. Varda will end up dying to the top lane, so all that posturing doesn't do a lot. And well, I didn't say much will come from this mid lane, but Puppy is so low and CTY the has no real answer to that kind of aggression. The momentum has just been crazy. Look at this. They have an ancient stack too. Look at where... Oh, that's ridiculous. It seems like they've been everywhere on the map and they've been ancient stacking in the meantime. That's crazy. Yeah, it's not even it's not even just one, two. I think that's actually a quad ancient yeah. stack in there. So in the past like two minutes, they had this massive stack. They took out two oh, observer wards. Dead. They dewarded everywhere. They killed the tiny. They, they're about to kill the Omni maybe twice. It looks like he's going to die twice here. Yep. Couple of extra attacks from Paparazzi. One more will do it. His metamorphosis Ooh. just wore off, however. Is he going to go under the tower? No, he won't. He'll turn around. Yep, Souls arrived, and it would have punished Paparazzi pretty heavily D if he did dive it. This is one of the games where, as a support for Secret, you're just you just feel like a firefighter. Like it, it, your whole entire side of the map, and all your heroes are just dying, and everyone's screaming for help, and you just <laughs> need to try and do what you can. But sadly, they just seem like they're a little bit too late. <laughs> Love that with okay. How how do I actually fight Young Eleven? Throw him away. Don't deal with it. The team secret oh, are looking to find three the stack? men smoke up. They're going to look for the opportunity, and what a good time to do it. Yapsaw, uh, he late. doesn't have the Observer Ward. They need to see up the hill. Maybe they can at least get the pick up on the TA. If they Observe Ward the hillside, it will work. Lanham soaks up the smoke gank. And Ori, well, he's got two big black dragons left to farm. That is all. That, yeah, and they got no one that can farm it there. The I secret. think they only got experience from, like, two or three of the Ancients, too. I think if they get the experience, it's still, like, decent. I mean, two dragons, it's, it's all right, but... I mean, you're two, still two, in a... Two dragons and a, and a kill. Okay, they got one dragon so far. Lanham is coming back in again with his spirit, just trying to cause fighter problems. They did get that sentry ward oh, down. Dream coil over on Ori. Hides, now he pops back out, actually hitting with the Mel Strike into CT. Why? He doesn't care if they're the initiators. He wants to go for more. One hit into Yapsor and he loses one third of his life. That wasn't even a refraction buffed up hit. Those uh, traps do surprising amounts of damage too. Especially since they got buffed. Yeah, 250. I, I don't think I've seen people take the talent, but 200 psionic trap talent might be worth considering this game. The Fiend's Grip's over for Ace. He'll break free, still has a lot of one shots up his sleeve. Strength trait more pop, but what does he really do? He tosses, he's just trying to go for the kill onto Bane, realizing he's dead, but the nightmare! What a situation! Ace will take it off him, tosses the tree, as we'll have a quick pause out by Puppy. But this is escalating quickly. Yeah, this in is, favor this, of VG. This has been a very hectic 10 minutes. I don't really think that they were expecting VG to push the pace like this. You know, normally you're like, okay, Terrorblade and TA. Terrorblade relies on Metamorphosis. You had a good two and a half minutes in between Tower Sieges. TA, you expect some Ancient Stacking. Brewmaster, you, you know, he's going to get level 6 at some point. Maybe 10 minutes into the game. But he has just been on fire. Brewmaster is, are you kidding me, level 9? <laughs> yeah. He's almost, he's almost level 10 and he's 8 gold away from his blink. So things are looking bleak for VG, but Secret, keep in mind, they still do have the Omni Knight. Omni Knight is one of the best team fighters in the game right now, yeah. and because of their heavy reliance on physical damage almost entirely from two of their cores, they're not going to be able to do anything in G during GA if Omni Knight can actually get his spells off. However, yeah. the one thing that is concerning is he's going for Hand of Midas. So... He... It wants to play the farm game versus a team that yeah, he's going is happy Midas. to play the farm game. Drew just finished his hand of Midas, and there's an extra term of knowledge flying out in the courier. This one's going to go to Lanham, of course, but like he's his his primary counter is the Brewmaster. When we're talking about like Fada here, like the Brewmaster is going to get so much experience, so much level progression. Team Secret need to do something to quell this, and there's more than just an ET kill. They need to get something larger, and they're looking for Paparazzi up on the top lane. Ace is coming under the cover of Smoke. They're rotating over, and it looks like they're searching for the for the stacks. There are no stacks. Ever since they dropped that Sentry Ward and contested the Ancients before, the only stacks they were preparing were further to the south, which Ori just farmed, no, and they now has 5.5k gold. They weren't looking for the stacks. They were looking for they the were. TA. They didn't find her. Yeah, the TA was actually farming off to the right, so props to Ori to farm me in a very safe place. And Paparazzi left and pushed bottom lane. 
The reason they don't expect the stacks is just because of how active the supports have been. The support them is showing the majority of the time, so, you know, they can't be everywhere. And they've been on the map, so they can't have been stacking at the same time. Stomp's coming in. The TA trap slowed him down just enough. They can actually get that sleep off. Yapsol wants to help out, and all he can do is pick up the Elder Titan. But it's all a little bit too late. He'll end up stealing the Astral Spirit. The Puppy will fall. A T1 for a T1 tower trade off on both the top and bot lane. So Tiny is going to space creating with the Shadow Blade, which is somewhat interesting because he's their main late gamer, which means that if their mid game is poor and Tiny doesn't have any farming items, they will get obliterated. It, might, it probably won't even get the late game uh, if their mid game goes poorly. So let's see, who, he, who can he solo kill with this? Probably, mm, I don't even know. The Bane doesn't... I don't think he can kill uh, them. It's going to be close. If you catch the TA without refraction up, <laughs> maybe. Lanham has... having a little bit of trouble. So this will work when you've got Fada there to help out. Now he has enough damage to get through the ET. Meanwhile, Puck, Dream Call on bottom, wants to jump away. Puppy, ah, oh, Fiend's gripped up. Paparazzi will take care of him. Yeah, Sol was moving over, hoping for a steal of his own. But doesn't find anything. But you'll take anything you can get right now. One for one trade off. Just that one for one trade off. It's uh, how oh, she does. The team fight recap doesn't even tell me how much I need to know. But it should be a little bit more in favor of Secret, considering how far behind they are. Well, Ace got a 270 from killing Lana. Yeah, Papa so got 185. Double damage rune on Young Eleven. He needs space. He needs to leave. He's got a trunk of roller. That might no, 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 no. It won't help him. Only reflect fraction would have saved him right there. Mm -hmm. But I think already melded very early on. And they're keeping the suns going. Young Eleven knows he can just split this out. Now Fenrir in through the rear. Nightmare causing targets to switch from one to the other. Brewmaster still holding on. He's got his one charges. Triggers them now. Fortification done for the Radiant side. Still thinking of fighting. There is no dream call to fight with for the moment. And there's your Nightmare once again. Wondering who can really defend this tower when they're caught napping. And Paparazzi's not even there. He's again on bottom lane pushing. He, I mean, he's the one farming, and you think that the Brewmaster would maybe not be so involved because he has the Hanumitis, but he already has a Blink. So the advantage that you can take in between him not having the Blink Dagger in terms of his uh, uh, the opportunity cost is just non-existent. There was, like, very little they can do. And Bane's positioning that fight was also pretty good, too. He's, like, way out in front, and he's just there so that Brewmaster can get his ulti off. He might die, but he's tanky enough that they don't have to worry too much about him. Yeah. So what does Team Secret really have that can threaten Young Eleven before he can get his split off? Like, you can you can do your avalanche toss, and the silence from Puck was what was causing him problems underneath the tower. And all three of these things hit, and you still brought him down to 20% 20, 20 of his HP. Yeah, and you have defensive sleep, mm -hmm. if necessary, which is really, really good here. Yeah, I would, defensive I like sleep, that. there's so many abilities burning by Team Secret that he'll have one charges available. Well, they smoke up now, he's got an Invis rune on top of his Blink Dagger. He's also not scared because he went for damage instead of the health talent. Well, Nightmare Steel for Rubik. Very nice smoke pop. Even if he died, it's like, eh, you know. Well, he may still do. Drug and Haze thrown out by Young Eleven. We've seen him want to dive down towns before in the Fiend Crypt from Fenrir. They'll commit anything they've got, mainly because Paparazzi's also here this time. His last attack will be able to reach Yapsaw. Roshan being started up now by the Templar Assassin. Ace and Puppy are pretty nearby. Yeah, this positioning is pretty good for them. It's nighttime. They don't have vision over here. This could be the they play got, that they need. They need they got vision. No jump in though. They, yeah, they need to see inside the pit. The observer knows they're watching. Here comes the park and in through the side. Ace with the avalanche toss. Rujan killed by the rain. Who gets the Aegis? The immortal Ace Dyer. She gets swapped out of life of Hamarazzi. Snatches the Aegis Immortal, will be the Templar Assassin. They had to try something, but the Sunder kicks in. Ace has no more life to work with. And Puppy is caught on the wrong side of the river. Maybe there could be some revenge. They pick up a throw down on the Brewmaster. He was silent, so he couldn't get the split off. Puppy did eventually die. And Ooh. the rest of Team Secret are on the run. Yapsor actually has traps, which is probably one of the best steal spells that you can steal as a Rubik. Well... Oh no, don't lose traps. No, nice. yeah, it's such a good thing going for you, Yapsor. <laughs> he's lost traps, and he's about to lose his T1 tower up on top. This is just a beatdown. 
It really is. Let's have a, let's have a look at that rush moment again. This could have been so good, but there was no Aegis pickup. Perfect timing on the Avatars. You at least get the uh, the kill. But where like the Aegis, it was trapped underneath Ori. Yeah, it was. <laughs> It was, so he, so was, he couldn't click it without attacking the TA? He was right on top of it. I'm sure Ace was spam clicking <laughs> to hell right on top of him. It's like, man, like, why didn't I just toss the TA away? <laughs> I could just throw him away from the Aegis. Well, that's probably one of those situations where you go into like the showcase view, so you can kind of click on it on the ground easier. Could you imagine that, like, switching to showcase in the middle of such a team fight? Like, that... Dyer are scanning. The things that you do for an Aegis. <laughs> Well, if he got it, that fight would have been very different, but for now, it's now VG Gaming with an Aegis the Immortal in the hands of the Templar Assassin. They've got double blinks now on both Brew and TA. And this Terror Blade's getting fatter and fatter. Had the Dragon Lance to start with, but the Manta Style is only 500-ish gold away. And this dual threat is just way too much. And on top of that, I think VG have better late game. Because the Puck is the one that's supposed to be controlling the game right now, but his net worth is... I mean, it's not its not terrible, but it's not great. He is 2-0, and zero, but I think it more worries me that his kills plus assists only add up to 2. Granted, Secret only have 4 kills, but, you know, they're supposed to be pushing the pace of the game. They're supposed to be running around, getting kills with Tiny, using Dream Call at every opportunity, but they just have not been able to get anything off the ground. No, they've been trying. They have definitely been trying. That just doesn't open up for them. That's now VG Gaming. They will push down the mid. Paparazzi has his mana style and he's already queuing up the Scotty. Look at Fenrir. He's not lured in by the <laughs> He's not lured in by the uh and they got by the, the patch courier. notes. And they got the bloody courier. He went a note in feeble build on Bane on uh on Bane. Really? And Feeble is overrated. Heavily overrated in my opinion. Even with, with the talent, I think it's not great. It depends on what you're up against. I think Tiny like hits very, very hard, so Enfeeble is less value. If you ever like a PA or something, I think Enfeeble is extremely good. But in general, I think his other two skills are just way more useful. VG Gaming are trying to force this mid. Thanks to the nice removal of the waves by both Puck as well as as well as the Rubik. Like as this Fable Rift Orb. It just makes it very difficult to keep them up. Most of the metamorphosis has been wasted, so they're going in and doing exactly the same thing again. <gasps> oh, Fenrir Fender cancelled it! Thinking he was a little bit worried it'll be stolen. Right now it's only refraction that was stolen, picked up and thrown in very, very deep. Precept, damn, he's so tanky. And the nightmare with the splitter. They've actually got enough space created. The all flies for Fenrir. CTY goes after him and claims him. A one-for-one -one trade off. They still get the tier two tower. Top tier two tower remains barely alive for VG. Oh, he got the silent trap damage. Hmm? He got the trap damage. Nice. <laughs> Is this when you start to stack him? I mean, that's a lot of damage. They're under farm too, so that thing's gonna hurt. Can can you think about like how much is it? Do you turn this into the new Techie's mind? Like, can you crunch some numbers for me? How much will it be with max traps on one position? I don't think they stack. That you can't stack them on top of each other. Oh, I don't think the damage debuff stacks. That'd be sick, dude. <laughs> I know. That's what I was thinking. I highly doubt it. I'm pretty sure they do not. <laughs> Either way, Ari, back into more ancient stack farming. He is sitting at 11,000 net worth, 12,000 for the Terra Blade. He actually moved off off uh, the Scotty. He's going to go for Hurricane Pike. Brewmaster split. Ace. Guess the Avalanche try and create a little bit of space, but here comes Ari with his attacks. They dust it over on Ace. That Shadow Blade. It won't save him a hell of a lot, but it's enough when Yamsaw can toss back the spirits, and that will create the space, stopping Fenrir from keeping the chase going. And they'll turn around. They want these kills. The silence under Fenrir. Puck silence for actually stunned up for the moment. Nightmare avoiding damage for Fenrir, but he can't avoid a five-man lineup of Team Secret. From all sides and angles, they bring down the Bane. Yeah, Tiny's still very, very difficult to kill. Status resistance on Dust, good luck. They have to be forcing top now. It's, this almost feels like they're fighting when, like, Ravage is down. In case, in this case, it's the Brewmaster Split is down. So they can push the Tier 2 tower on top. Yep, and no Aegis anymore, so... Beachy don't have that threat. Puppy's on defense duty on the bot lane. So that's pretty good. They want to fight despite being pretty far behind. However, Vichy did not have the Elder Titan there. 
there. He was uh, back healing, and TA was extremely low on mana. I don't even think she had mana for a refraction at that point uh, after she had been done clearing that Ancient. So that's not really a fight that you want to take. You're just going to go in there and die and perhaps chain feed. Well, as long as she can avoid that, then life will be great. BKB will help to avoid that. Picked up for the TA. You kind of push out the top lane a little bit because Team Secret are getting some breathing room. Now that VG Gaming are repairing what's on their side of the tracks, Ace is farming up bottom, which was the already heavily pushed in lane. Rapidly approaching the end of his SMY as his item of choice. And it's allowing Puck as well. He's got his BTs blink and fail for CTY. Trying to be everywhere if possible. And Fader is rapidly approaching his item too, which is the Radiance. And whoop, well, there's the Kaya. Up for CTY. Kaya, uh, Kaya's all right. I don't think it puts him in the range where he can instant kill the supports, though. Generally, people prefer Dagon. It's similar price point, um, and it's also something that you can upgrade. Puck actually has an issue later in the game where you just have too much gold because he has that 420 GPM talent. So you generally want like a little bit more expensive items because you you usually already have Blink and Yules for your cheap items. But they don't have any silences in this game. It looks like he doesn't actually feel like he needs the Yules, which is a little surprising to me because that is just considered absolutely core on most pucks. He's, he's preparing himself for the rapid fire dream call is what he really wants, not the 420 talent. <laughs> <laughs> also denied, <laughs> denied the tier two tower up on top just for style points. So the net worth for the last couple of minutes has actually been slightly swinging Team Secret's way after winning one fight. So that's pretty good for them. However, I do not think they'll be able to contest the second Roshan uh, coming out from Avicii. It's yep. going to come out very, very soon. And Mass BKB is coming out from Avicii. So I think that, you know, the charts are going to swing the Secret's way and it looks pretty hopeful. But you have to consider this next fight with the BKBs and the Aegis, or with just the BKBs, how it is going oh, to go Poppy. for them. You're in too deep. CTY is the neighborhood. No, no, Poppy can really get himself out of this one. And Fenrir! Oh, he's going to get the Fiend Grip as well. CTY wasn't really sure if he should be involved in this. They were setting up for a gank on bottom. That's just a really dangerous place. At the same time, you don't really expect that Reserve Ward to be there. Even if it were on the high ground, though, on the normal ward spot, he still would have died. But. Because Vici are in a very offensive position, they can kind of farm wherever they want. You don't expect them to have wards on their side of the map. Yeah. Most of the time when you're in a position, you're like, okay, they have a wards on the opposite side of the map. But, you know, Vici are playing safe. They just want to win every single small fight that they can. They don't really need vision to win fights. Yep. In fact, that vision right now is a, is a defensive one that just, ooh, with the illusions as well, can burn through a fraction. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It doesn't burn through. Sh like, Ari blinks away, but he's definitely the aggressor out of this. But the Observe Warden Sentry, like, it, it watches the bottom, like, rotation if it does come, but it also keeps an eye on their Ancients. It keeps a, keeps an eye on the Money Bank, which is just VG Gaming's neutrals. Yeah, and it makes the supports feel safe so that they can, you know, go out on ward or solo defend towers, because that T1 is the last, uh, is, the, is the one on the bottom. Oh, I guess they have that mid, they have yeah, the mid they T1? Oh, my mid -tier God. Tier one up. That's really... Detrimental. You secret. know what actually made it hilarious is like where Team Secret was getting a lot of that money to catch up in the net worth. It was by taking the top tower, the tier two, and yeah. then VG Gaming backing out of the fight. I guess. But how you how do you contest Roche at this point? Like, yeah, you have the shrine, but you, shrines uh, are you yolo it. Like you you I, you CTY yolo it. I don't I don't even I don't think they can take the fight. No, there's no way they can take the fight. All they can do is just try and deny the Aegis or deny the Roshan well, kill. That's it. They're kind of poised to fight right now. The Radiance pick up on Omni Knight will be kind of nice, but still he is very susceptible to just simply being cycling for the entire duration of the fight. And it looks like Bane is inside oh, Roshan. BKB, Ooh, what a nice BKB. timing there for Ari. He knew. The Avalanche never even able to connect. Quick Sentry was down. Just guess there's anybody in Viz there. Nice. When and CTY wants help on bottom, Paparazzi has TP down here to defend the lane. They're not really not letting, like, Team Secret have any of these towers. But it's a smoke gang. Four men together. And Paparazzi is walking right into it. Yep, so straight pick up. Not the illusion. They toss down the tree. They know which one's the real one. And they'll flip him like a pancake. Ooh, back-to-back -back smoke. That was clutch. He probably didn't expect the back-to-back -back smoke. He saw the first one coming, or TA probably caught it on the first one, but the second one they have no idea. And now, 
Tigger are in a pretty decent spot, and it looks like VT are around Roche, but I don't think you can take it with your TV down. No, oh, not when you're going to lose a hero already. CTY, he came over for the bounty rune. Ori, he's got himself a haste rune. This is so difficult for Puck to escape while the mid's being fought out. The Brewmaster split is there. Maybe they can make some more space. CTY is still on the run, however, through that top lane, but it's in the mid where the Brewmaster Brulings, they're starting to wear off right now. They'll have to back up with the Earth Bruling two seconds before it's gone. Ace has also managed to escape the fight. He has a gem. On 11. That was actually a little bit scary. He didn't bother popping his BKB before the split, but... I'm I'm actually surprised they were even, like, in a remotely offensive position without the Terror Blade. They were pretty far ahead, but mm -hmm. things are slipping back slowly but surely. And Fada's build of going super greedy with the Radiance is surely paying off because Vici have not been able to take advantage of it. Yep. And this also makes it worth repelling himself in the fights because he can actually do some damage. And the blind miss chances are going to go a long way to help saving his teammates. If you miss that first melt hit, that's such a big loss in damage. And I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm still loving that little play that CTY had. Which one? With, with the CTY and Ori. So while that mid fight was going on, it was basically a game of cat and mouse with the puck, as well as the hasted Templar assassin. That was all going down on top lane. Now VG Gaming, they're going to smoke up. Five men in it. They're not going into Roshan, however. They're going to go straight past him and wrap around the side. The circle comes out to say, let's check our own jungle. Fardus the closest. He'll break the smoke with Puffy and the jump in from Young Eleven. They'll get that silence off. It's that fresh Orchid over on Ori, denying Farda any presence in this fight. And now the nightmare continues for Puffy. But the counter push comes on top lane. CTY is attacking the tier 3 tower. Yamso will be able to get himself a little, di little bit of distance from Young Eleven. I mean, he's just a puck, though. He is just a puck. Ace is just a tiny as well. Paparazzi already with that Sunder stealing so much life. And Yamso could do little to nothing to cancel this kind of push. And they don't even care about Roshan. So the puck added some momentum towards the top. That did bring Lanham back. So he's not part of this fight right now. But at the same time, it's Secret who are men down, and there are about to be more Farda. He's down for the count. Buyback does not help you in this situation when you have none. Ruby's gone as well, pushing into the tier three tower. Fortification will delay this pressure, but VG Gaming so in control of this matchup that it really doesn't matter. This is the slow walk forward. Fiend's grip from Fenrir controlling Puppy. He'll fall as well. It seems like a hopeless case, mainly because BG Gaming currently own what is secrets. And this is what we talk about a lot with the Omni Knight. Like, do you want to go Greaves and help out your team, or do you want to go Midas Radiance, which would probably be better suited on a lot of different heroes? They have any silence, and you get silence, you're dead. And he just died two times in a row due to the Orchid pickup because he's just so fat. And Fada surely expects that he can get Repel off because they have very few stuns. Yeah, but. Yeah, this, just this Orchid is just... It was the first reveal of it as well, like it only yeah. just flew in, so there's no way he could have prepared for that. And then we transition ourselves forward to the mid push. Well, he could prepare for it with Greaves. Greaves, you already need armor on your team, because look at their lineup. You have TA, you have Elder Titan, and you have Terribly. Like, all physical and a lot of minus armor, so you get... You, you either get Ghost Scepter or you get a lot of armor and HP to deal with it. But instead, he felt like he needed to carry the game a lot more because you have a puck in the mid lane who wasn't able to really snowball so he feels like he needs to be the secondary or even uh third damage source for their team and it yeah he has the items but really the damage output compared to any of the other cores is just going to be very minimal yeah puck's got even more defense now with the lincoln sphere pickup same thing for team secret is their observer and sentry ward placed down by yapso was instantly scouted so all they have to do is bring the Brewmaster over with his gem, and that Observer Ward is gone. And they just, you know, they, as soon as they got the PKBs and the gem, I thought it would be very, very hard for Vici to lose. They, like, you know, built, uh, they built, you know, a little bit greedy at the start with the Midas first, maybe, but after that, just, you know, full-on team fight items yeah. to the point where Secret are going to have a very tough time holding this. Oh, they've actually got a full Bloodthorn as well. There's a 30-minute Bloodthorn on the Templar Assassin on top of everything else that she already has. Paparazzi, while the Aegis Demoil is on TA, he's got the cheese. It's not only Sunder, but also that cheese life. Lotus Orb, fresh pickup. 
for Fada. It's all or nothing right now as VG Gaming, they come in through the top, a quick silence for the Templar Assassin, CTY doing what he can, but Young Eleven, he's in the back lines with the Templar Assassin, Yapso gets to pick up a throwdown, got an angel by protection, and Ori really learned to remember, this is the Aegis Immortal, he'll have that trigger, and the cost is too great for Team Secret to defend, and it is impossible to defend. Puffy will call it, and VG Gaming take game one of this winner's bracket semi-final. So Lanem and Eleven were certainly the MVPs for me. Lanem just drew so much attention away from the TA so that the Ogre couldn't really dominate her. And then Eleven solo killing the Tiny twice and just really messed up Ace's game. Yeah, it really did. It's great to see that level of coordination coming from...